The year 2022 began with fireworks in certain parts of the country as custom, with many reeling back from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic that seemed not to give anyone a break as regulations became less impulsive and the promise of normalcy rented the air. On the 2nd of January would come the report of the death of Sir Charles Njonjo, the first Attorney General of the Independent Kenya at the age of 101 years. The nation would move on after the passing of the notable icon cascading into the campaigns for the general elections, hitting peaks, and on the February 23, 2022, a major play was made in the political chessboard during a Sagana 3 meeting when sitting President Uhuru Kenyatta officially endorsed ODM leader Raila Odinga for the presidency. A day after the endorsement, and focus on the global perspective shifted as Ukraine's capital Kyiv was infiltrated by strikes from Russia, which had been massing troops near Ukraine's borders in what it termed to be training exercises, setting off a war between the two Soviet nations. And back in the local arena, on the 21st of April, the country would once again descend into mourning, this time around for retired President Mwai Kibaki, who had earned the abiding respect and affection as seen by the multitude that came out to pay their last respects. Perhaps the main event that had the attention of most was the August 9th polls that went on to the 15th of August when the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission Chair Wafula Chebukati would make the announcement that would splinter the commission and begin a saga around the highest office in the land. The Supreme Court would take center stage in determining the stalemate on the presidential polls and on the 6th of September, President Dr. William Ruto's win was upheld. Two days later, on the 8th of December, the globe would stop for a while following the death of the United Kingdom's longest serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, aged 96, after reigning for 70 years. Tumshangilie mheshimiwa rais kwa makofi yanapopokea kitala hichi. Na ni dhahiri shairi kwamba anakuwa mrijeshi mkuu wa majeshi yote ya Kenya. 5 days later back in the country on the 13th of September, the youngest president in Kenya's history Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta handed over office to President Dr. William Ruto after almost a decade at the helm of the country. Asante sana. Asante sana mheshimiwa rais. Along with expectations in the new regime, a sharp division faced Kenyans on the 10th of October over whether it was Utamaduni Day or Huduma Day, but all will be dropped for the first Mashuja Day after the general polls. Three days later, on the 23rd of October, Kenyans would receive reports of Pakistani journalist Ashav Sharif shot and killed on Kiseli and Magadi Road in Kajiado County by police in an alleged case of mistaken identity. Kenyan troops would depart for the war on Eastern DRC on the 2nd of November, commanding a joint East African Community Force to help restore security in the region of the new member of the EAC. Back in Kenya, three days later, the Kenyan skies became a no-fly zone for the national carrier as pilots went on strike, literally grounding all operations of a stalemate with their employer before a court order cleared the runway. The flagship hustler fund would be the talk into December as the national exams gradually came to a close alongside a joyous win for Argentina and Lionel Messi at the cost of France with their playmaker Kylian Mbappe taking the boot in the FIFA World Cup. 
The joys of the festivities would be sombered by the passing of Catherine Casavulli, a media icon, trailblazer and mentor in the media fraternity, while on the other side of the globe, another icon, this time in football, Pele, would breathe his last at 82 years. It is only a sample of all that culminated this year as we proceed to another with its own set of experiences. <laughs>